Hi, welcome to the workbench and uh, and today uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my N-Scale uh, Cameo layout at Paxton Road. So uh, here, here's the layout in its uh, in its casework. Paxton Road was really built as an experiment in uh, in Engage um, for my own uh, benefit. Really, I was interested in seeing whether some of the processes and uh, methods I used in the larger scale could be scaled down. But I think it also really proves that Engage is half the size of uh, of Double O in terms of layout footprint too. I mean, uh, here we have a fully fledged cameo. Uh, that is, um, well, it's it's just over fifty centimeters long. Uh, it's under fifteen, or just over fifteen centimeters high, uh, and the viewing window is, you know, just over ten centimeters. Um, to give you an idea of the depth, well, it's twenty-two, uh, and it, and it's all self-contained here. We've got uh, a, a sort of fiddle sector plate here um, that allows you to get access to both tracks. Um, and that's uh, on a flying lead, which is fed from the layout itself. And at the other side, uh, there is uh, there's just a gauge master uh, handheld plugged in here, uh, which is actually at the moment fed from the same 12 volt supply for the lighting. So um, although it's not ideal, you, you can still control the locomotives, although they're a little bit sm slower uh, than you would expect with uh, with using 16 volt AC as the feed. Uh, so yeah, a compact size, a compact uh, arrangement, and perhaps something that would be very easy to uh, to take with you to a small exhibition. Taking a, uh, a look into the layout, uh, we can see that uh, it's basically a self-contained scene. Um, there is a uh, an LED lighting strip, which is just under the, the front palmet there, which unfortunately does get a slight cast of shadow down the front of the uh, the silo, um, which, uh, which actually doesn't detract overall from the scene because when you get down close and you're looking through that, it kind of, uh, it, it, it does work. Uh, some of the uh, the experiments worth noting, the back scene is a, a standard off the shelf photo back scene. I've trimmed it right back, but I've also oversprayed it with some white primer, which has which has softened it and made it feel hazier and uh, and more distant, which has worked really really well. Uh, the structures at the back of the scene, uh, which you'll see in the video, are plastic hard shells with textured plastic roofs, but actually the surface textures on the walls are are photo textures. Um, either from photos or downloaded from uh, from scale scenes and I think that works really well it, it's that stepping stone from the back scene which is obviously flat uh, to to the foreground where you've got the silo which is a fully 3d model built out of various textured styrenes and things um, the trees were were handmade and uh, and I'm really really pleased with how the oak tree at the front left has turned out um, they help break the scene up a little bit Behind uh, the oak tree is the uh, slightly contrived um, exit through uh, under a road bridge, uh, which uses one of the uh, Pico Varigurda things, um, which I remember so fondly from my own double O layout as a child, although obviously this is the N-gauge version. Uh, and there isn't really much else to say about, uh, about the setup of the layout. It's basically just two sidings. Uh, I do use DG couplings in Engage, and so what you'll see here is you've got um, two little uh, wires that protrude, and uh, they're connected to um, to uncoupling magnets. So uh, by uh, when they're pulled out towards you, the uncoupling magnet is pulled away from underneath the centre line of the track, so they don't work. And when they're pushed in, they do work. 
uh, and this one is the front siding this one's the back siding and actually they're just in line with that um, it's basically a piece of kd magnet that's been cut down and put in a little box uh, and then buried under the track as I built the layout. As you can see, obviously the base of the layout is very, very thin because this is intended to live on a shelf. With the train now out of the way, we can see a little bit more of the yard. Um, Things to point out here are this is a uh, 3D printed lorry from Shapeways, which uh, obviously is a lot finer than anything you can find in a sort of die cast metal range. Uh, and I've added uh, scratch built wing wing moves to it as well. Ground texture is worth noting. The uh, None of this is rocket science. It's all stuff I've used in four mil modeling before. I've just used slightly shorter fibers. Uh, the grass areas are made up of um, one and two mil as a base and then adding a few areas where it's got up to uh, to a few four mil fibers in sort of a wintry grass uh, sort of very pale straw like color which suggests longer grass uh, the bushing on the embankments is just woodland scenics um, foliage mat but teased out quite thin placed over the top these areas of weeds or nettles if you like are a gordon gravit technique where you use um, fake hair postiche and you chop it up and layer it with um with a sort of textured uh, foliage material um, which I think is really really effective it works in double O it looks great here too uh, the road surface in the yard also a Gordon Gravit technique it's a gloss hum, a humble gloss fire which is like a dark grey over a card so this is just mounting card and then you sprinkle talcum powder on when it's dry you vacuum it off uh, it leaves a lovely mottled texture just a very subtle texture uh, the track is worth mentioning uh, I've mentioned it before in my blog it's superb uh, it is code 40 bullhead rail in uh, in plastic sleeper bases it's available from british fine scale it is a kit you do have to put it together uh, but i think the results are worthwhile uh, at the back of the scene you can see some end brass um etched fencing here and there's also some end brass parts on on some of the the silo details here at the front and the uh, ubiquitous um model scene pico model scene uh, barrels and uh and pallets which are dotted around but only sparingly and i think it's really easy to go overboard on on cameo detail and things suddenly start to look really really um crowded uh, in this small size so i've really deliberately kept this you know wound right back uh, to its sort of very bare essentials having a quick look down uh, down this end of the layout there's a few things also worth uh, mentioning a uh, very small half relief building just tucked around this corner really helps to sort of suggest that the layout's bigger than it is um, that's supposed to look like a bit of a prefab hut. Um, that one pallet there with the um, with the cement sacks on, uh, one of those is torn with a bit of cement spilling out. Just a, a very small detail. I didn't want to go overboard, but I think it's really effective. Um, the silo itself is just styrene. The um, the main body of it is actually a double O scale um, GWR conical water tank uh, turned upside down. Um, which gave me the, the rough size. I think the framing's probably over scale, but this was really just a first draft, really, to see whether I could scratch build in this scale. I, I think it's uh, it's pretty effective as it is. Uh, but it's been bedded in with uh, with a little bit of PVA on a piece of uh, baking parchment and then um, static grass applied to each foot before I placed it into this scene, which uh, which allowed me to sort of be very neat and precise about where that grass was uh, was growing. So uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope that's been interesting and um, hopefully perhaps shown you the potential of end scale uh, or at least consider the um, the possibilities of building your own small micro layout, whether it be an N or, or something larger. Um, and hopefully uh, it's also given you a bit of a taste of the sort of stuff you can find in my book, uh, Small uh, Layout Design Handbook, which is published by Wild Swan. Uh, anyway, yes. Um, There'll be more of the these sorts of videos soon on the channel, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, and thanks again for watching.